Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller. It's been just about six weeks since the Supreme Court ruling in the case of National Housing Trust against Marksman. That's the case in which the Supreme Court said that the security guards were employees, not independent contractors and such, entitled to benefits like paid leave. Now, what has happened since then? The security guards are saying not enough. Some of them staged a demonstration a couple of days ago in Crossroads to bring attention to the issue. Well, we have a full panel joining us to talk us through the issues. And joining us in studio, we have John Azar. He's managing director of King Alarm Systems. We also have Carla Ann Harris Roper, labor and employment lawyer. From the Jamaica Association for Private Security, we have Randall Stewart, as well as Teddy Lee Gray, and with us as well, Dr. Angela Brownberg, the opposition spokesperson on labor. We had invited a government representative, but we were told that the Ministry of Labor is still in negotiations on the issue, and therefore they're not ready to talk. Just before we go to our guests in studio, though, we asked a couple of security guards how they feel about the current situation. Well, I'm kind of disappointed, you know, because the court had ruled. We had always known that we were employees, but the court has made it more indefinite now. Um, the thing that I see the company is still doing with our statutory deduction, they're still taking their portion of the statutory deduction from our pay, which that should have been stopped a long time ago. But yet still the company's team still telling us that we are contractors, so they still take their portion from our pay. And have you heard anything as to what is happening? All we keep hearing is they're waiting on government. That's all we keep hearing. I am very disappointed. I am very to say that nobody is saying anything or coming now to say that. Listen to me. I want you to give me some more time. I, 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 am, I am tired. I am tired of this. Because the thing is that if there's an old law, or if there's a barrier, why can't or no, why can't the managers come to us and explain to us? Because the thing is that I want to know what are you waiting on? What aspects of the ruling were most important for you? I am so happy that the, the, the court, the judge charged that if I am sick, I don't get paid for those days. If I want to go on vacation, I have to pay for I, I, I don't get the I don't, don't get any form of benefits and everybody know this. You know this. So the sick days along with the vacation. I'm I'm so happy for those two. What about the issue of overtime pay? Overtime pay? Well, working twelve hours every day. Five days or to six days, we're not getting paid for the extra four hours. I'm just frustrated with the not being paid for the four hours, time and a half. The mere fact that I am entitled to it, it is mine. Why not give? Why not give it to me? And it is due to me. So, what do you want to hear now? I want to hear by Monday, saying that even though. My the group that I am in, you know, the APS, we said that we want to have a merry Christmas, but I don't mind by the time I blink my eyes. All these benefits, the overtime, the real no, the real no, the money that they have for us, I don't mind getting them before Christmas. I have to be working holidays. I I, I am unable to go to school with my Little ones, I am unable to help them with homework based on the time that I get home. So this is affecting my family life. I just need these companies to just honor the court ruling. Right? They need to start to give us our vacation leave or sick leave. And they need to start to pay their portion of statutory reduction. And they need to start with like from yesterday. We're not going to sit and wait for them to decide and when they are going to do it. Otherwise, they will take forever to do it. So I just need them to comply with the court ruling. Harris Roper, let me start with you. And what's the, what's the import of this ruling? You know, Dion, the, the, the real import <laughs> is that 
the <coughs> security company and indeed other entities that label persons who work with them as independent contractors, the court ruling is pointing you to the fact that, as Justice Bat said, it doesn't matter what <coughs> they intended to create, it's what they in fact do create. And that's the important point. That if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's more likely than not a duck, no matter what you label it as. And, and so to put that into context then, you have persons who, based on the various principles of law, are to be treated as workers or employees in a strict sense, and then the various benefits attach. That is the issue. However, with this court ruling, you know, I think a lot of people have this view that because the court has ruled that in this particular case, Marksman is said to now have to pay NHT benefits. That's, that's, that's this case. That's the gravamen of this case. The necessary implications, though, are that any other security company that operates in a similar manner to Marksman, as Jamaican people say, must take sleep and mark death. Well, zero in on that a little bit, because last time we spoke about this issue, trade unionist Patrice St. Ennis um, was saying to us that that was what he was starting to hear from the other companies, that boy, that relates to Marksman, it does relate to the other companies. And, and that's a fact. It is a fact, because nobody from any other security company can seek to enforce this judgment, because this judgment is specifically against Maxman. I understand that there are some other companies that NHT has taken to court, um, and other cases are out there pending of a similar nature. Those companies, they, are, they would be now clear that the likelihood, if their operations are similar to Maxman, is that the likelihood this, those cases would be resolved in the similar manner. So they it should, well, the matters are subjudicated, so they, they perhaps will wait, but that's where it's pointing to. So it, it's not of general application, but the principles that underline would say to you, if this is the way you are operating, this is the likely possibility. Well, certainly, if you take NHT, national insurance, <coughs> definitely those statutory deductions because they were interpreting the statute as to whether or not you're an employee for that purpose. But when it comes on to the holidays with pay, the maternity leave, those things, those now you're going to looking to see if there are contiguous things, if, if they can, the principles can overarch. For NIS, NHT, definitely I would say, look no further, this is likely you ought to match the contributions in the way the statute says you should and not just take to say they are self-employed. But for, for the maternity leave, holidays with pay, those things, um, you're looking to see a principle that you'd want to overarch. Um, the right, hold, overtime... Hold, hold, hold that thought for me because the overtime is a whole different thing. <laughs> and I want to get other thoughts on it. So let's just take our first break. My apologies, St. Patrice Ennis, of course, trade unionist. I meant. Yes. So let's go to break. When we come back, we continue our conversation. Remember, you can WhatsApp us. It's 3810072. And our Twitter handle is TBJ All Angles. So stay tuned. We'll soon come.